Welcome to the By Way of Commandment podcast, a podcast dedicated to the study of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the finer points of his doctrine. Join us as we study the gospel through the scriptures and standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints. All right, Latter-day Saints, show me. Show me where in the Bible Jesus explicitly and directly teaches about modern temple worship. (sighs) That's a question that I get quite frequently, both online and off. Um, And and a number of variations of that same question. Um, Welcome back to the channel, by the way. I'm your host, Jacob Ryder. Um, This question about the temple, and particularly the the Latter-day Saint uh, concept of the temple and temple worship, temple ordinances, covenants, etc., um, is a frustration and a stumbling block and an annoyance to many uh, well-intending, well, mostly well-intending Christians. Um, and it's pretty common for our interfaith dialogues to revolve around a handful of, of specific topics. Amongst those is certainly uh, our modern temple worship and whether or not it is uh, quote-unquote biblical, whether or not Jesus and the apostles ever actually taught any such thing, uh, even remotely close to our modern LDS uh, temple worship. Now, this, as I mentioned, this is a question I've received many times, uh, both in, in person and online. Sometimes it's from well-meaning uh, Christians, particularly Protestants, who are trying to better understand where it is we, we got this doctrine or, or theology surrounding a modern temple liturgy, modern temple worship. Um, but often enough, they are coming from uh, defectors, those who have left the church for various reasons or who are uh, Protestant critics of the church um, and a number of other uh uh, individuals and groups. Now, I, this is a question and a, and a concern and a comment that I've received even recently on one of my videos. Uh, you may remember the video I did a few weeks ago on uh, my recap of the Epistle to the Hebrews in our Come Follow Me um, discussion. And in that video, I argue for the fact that uh, some of the language that's being used in the letter to the Hebrews is temple language. It's temple symbology. There's temple themes that are um, that, that are brought up and, and used in the book of Hebrews, in the epistle of Hebrews. Um, I've Now, b- because of that, um, I wanted to do a little quick response video today. And this is going to be addressing both Latter-day Saints and uh, Protestants and uh, Catholics and any other non-Latter-day Saint Christian denomination. Um, this is a video that is going to be very short, I just want to kind of get uh, get to the heart of the issue with this particular comment or question that many non-Latter-day Saints have about our temple theology and where it comes from. Now, I'll, I'll show you this comment here. This is a comment from my most recent video on the, the Epistle of the Hebrews. Um, Jesus never explicitly teaches your, your LDS, your Mormon concept of temple worship, um, anywhere. Uh, this is antithetical to the, the gospel of salvation that he taught. Uh, you Mormons are teaching a false gospel that will lead people to hell. Um, now there's a, a couple, uh, uh, a couple different ideas happening here in this quest or in this comment. Um, but in the comment, there is implicitly a, a question and a concern, and this comes in many forms. And so the, the question is from non Latter-day Saints to Latter-day Saints, uh, please show me where in Scripture Jesus or the apostles uh, ever taught anything even remotely close to your modern LDS interpretation of temple worship. Um, now, for many years, especially during my mission, questions like this arose all the time. And my immediate gut reaction is to put on my detective hat and dive into the scriptures and pull every reference I can possibly find to support any number of different principles, laws, doctrines, um, themes, motifs, anything I could possibly find uh, from any direction in the scriptures to help back up our position as to why we believe in modern temple worship. 
Um, I might have been tempted to talk about the, the very scriptures, bring up many scriptures that talk about these specific principles of the gospel that we are explicitly taught about in the temple, such as faith and repentance. Um, I might be very tempted to look at a number of scriptures that talk about obedience and sacrifice and uh, consecration, the, the consecrating of one's life or even the, the law of chastity, the, the principles that surround the law of chastity. I might, I might search the scriptures diligently to find anything I can to that, that teach those specific principles and laws and doctrines. In fact, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, I frequently refer to the Sermon on the Mount as a beautiful uh, sermon from the Savior himself that teaches essentially everything uh, that we are taught and instructed to receive by covenant in the temple. Um, the Savior explicitly teaches about uh, faith and repentance. Um, he teaches about the Beatitudes, how we are to live, how we are to conduct ourselves, um, how are we, we are to treat one another. Um, he teaches about how uh, we are to view sexual relations. Um, he teaches a number of different concepts, uh, uh, important laws and principles of the gospel in the Sermon on the Mount that are explicitly found and taught in our modern temple ceremonies. Um, I might be tempted to bring that up. I might also be tempted to bring up a number of scriptures that refer to or talk about either directly or indirectly uh, the doctrine of divine, um, divine investiture in which God has at various times invested his power and authority on a number of individuals, prophets, apostles, um, etc., angels, messengers, given them authority to uh, to judge, to judge others, to uh, retain or remit sin. Um, I might be tempted to share a number of scriptures that discuss the, um, or at least, uh, at the very least, imply the doctrine of theosis or deification. Um, scriptures such as, you know, Romans chapter 8, the idea of being adopted into the covenant of Christ and therefore being a full recipient and heir of God and joint heir with Christ, that we are to receive what Christ receives from the Father. Um, there's a number of scriptures that refer to those who overcome through the atonement of Christ, through the blood of the Lamb, and are given thrones and crowns and sit on the throne of Christ at the right hand of the Father to judge the universe, to judge the angels and, and so forth, uh, such as we see in in Revelation and such as we see in Hebrews and a few other places in scripture. I might also be tempted to bring up a number of scriptures that talk about clothing or use the use new clothing as a symbol um, or new names even. We see this explicitly mentioned in the book of Revelation. Um, in times past, I would be very um, apt and willing to dig into the scriptures and pull all of these different references out and put together my best argument from the scriptures where these concepts come from and why we as Latter-day Saints are perfectly justified in uh, using them to better under to not just better understand, but as the foundation for our modern temple worship. Um, however, I want to back up for a second. When, when someone asks us to show them where Jesus, where the apostles um, where, where the Bible says um, anything about modern temple worship, modern temple liturgy. Um, there's, there's actually several components to that question or comment or concern that need to be teased out. On the surface, it seems like a pretty simple and straightforward question. And somebody asks me that, my gut reaction is to just open up the scriptures and say, well, here, here's some th things to look at in the scriptures and in the Bible and, and, um, here's why I think these make a really uh, a really strong case for what we teach and practice in our modern LDS temple ceremonies. But that would be falling into a trap. Let me explain what I mean. Implicit in the conversation and implicit in the question or comment um, to, you know, you know, if somebody says you can't prove that Jesus taught or the apostles taught, anything closely, uh, remotely close to your temple ceremony. Um, what they're asking you um, is based on a number of assumptions and philosophical and theological baggage that comes with those. Um, 
first and foremost, and this is the biggie, and this is why so much of our interfaith dialogue between Latter-day Saints and non-Latter-day Saint Christians tends to, at some point, break down into a conversation about the nature of Scripture and Revelation and prophecy, is because implicit in this question about where in the Bible we can find our temple ceremonies explicitly taught is a presupposition or a, a theological or philosophical position that assumes sola scriptura. It assumes the Bible alone is the sole infallible inerrant rule of faith for a Christian. It assumes that the Bible is the only source of scripture that we can refer to and the only source of, in, of scripture or information that they will accept uh, any argument from uh, or be willing and open at least to hear any position from it. So this this baggage that comes along with the question surrounding, um, you know, the, the question of can you provide uh, scripture from the Bible to justify an LDS um, temple worship uh, this all presuppose, is presupposed by the doctrine of sola scriptura. Um, and here's why this is a trap for, for Latter-day Saints. The second that you or I try to reason from the Bible or try to pull scriptures from the Bible to justify our belief in and practice of uh, modern temple worship, um, immediately we are conceding to the fact that uh, all temple worship doctrine, theology, whatever, uh, anything to do with our modern temple worship can and ought to be found in the Bible explicitly. Um, as soon as you bring up any number of these scriptures that teach the principles, laws, uh, anything to do with what is also taught in our uh, modern temple ceremonies, um, the goalpost will then be moved. Because that's all good and well that the scriptures and Jesus taught about faith in him and repentance of sin and taught about um, loving your neighbor, taught about um, the law of chastity, you know, not, not a, um, you know, abstaining from, from even thinking about sexual relationships outside of the bounds of marriage. Um, any number of different, different things that Christ did in fact teach and are recorded in the new Testament. Um, the second that you are able to provide some scriptures from the new Testament or from the Bible generally, to support these teachings that are also found in the temple, the question then must be refined. And on the part of the non-Latter-day Saint Christian, the goalpost must be moved because they're not talking about the specific principles like faith and repentance, etc. They're talking about the specific ceremony itself, the endowment ceremony, the initiatories, the sealing uh, ceremony. They're, they're talking about the specific ordinances and the specific manner in which these ordinances are, are performed in the modern temple. Now they want to see those explicated in the New Testament. They want to see Jesus explicitly and directly uh, teach that uh, all people of the new covenant, uh, the covenant of Christ, must go to the temple and they're going to perform this ordinance, then this ordinance, then this ordinance, in this order, uh, and in this manner, and this is how you perform them. They, that's ultimately what they want to see. They want to see the entire endowment session explicated directly in the New Testament preferably in the words of Christ himself. Um, it's not there. Can we just admit that? Um, I, I, I don't have any problem admitting that. And here's why that's not a problem. Because Latter-day Saints are not operating under sola scriptura. We're not operating under the assumption that the Bible alone is the only uh, source of God's word, that it is the only inerrant source of God's word. Uh, we don't believe that at all. We believe in an open canon and we believe in modern revelation. Thank God for modern revelation. Thank God for prophets, for modern prophets, for modern revelation. We don't have to prove our theological position and justify our beliefs and practices from the Bible alone. Um, in fact, the second we try to, we have already fallen into their trap and are now playing by their game in their worldview. We don't believe in that worldview, so let's not play their game. And for many people, especially online, that's the type of game they're playing. It's a gotcha. I'm waiting for you to say something that I can 
uh, directly attack and prove false to make you look stupid or to make you look wrong and to feel better about myself and my position or simply just to prove that uh, Latter-day Saints are wrong, um, misguided, or even evil. Um, that's what, not always, but that's sometimes what those types of conversations are and what they're looking for. So I refuse to play that game. Um, it, in some regard, I think my channel can be looked at as a sort of apologetics uh, style channel in some sense, maybe certain videos more than others. Um, but I don't consider myself or my approach to uh, this podcast to be an apologetics uh, podcast. Um, this channel, for those of you who are maybe new to this channel, or maybe those of you who have been here for a little while, this channel is prim primarily for believing Latter-day Saints who simply just want to study together, um, learn more about the scriptures together, and so forth. We want to better understand our own beliefs, and I hope that my channel can in some way uh, help others in their own faith uh, faith journey as they continue to study the gospel and, and learn more. Um, but primarily, this is for believing Latter-day Saints. This isn't a channel where I spend a ton of time trying to do apologetics for the church or trying to prove or justify our theology um, to non-Latter-day Saints. That's just not what I'm super interested in. I don't care to engage in uh, formal debates um, occasionally that these informal debates will come up, especially online. Um, in which case, if I can tell that you aren't sincere in actually wanting to have a real dialogue and you're just looking for a gotcha, then I'm, I'm not interested in that and I'll move on. Um, and so I, I wanted to at least address this. This is kind of an addendum, I think, to several videos that I've done in the past in which uh, Listeners have made comments on those videos similar to or, or you know, to the effect of, you know, Latter-day Saints got it all wrong. Your temple worship is uh, evil, misguided, what have you. And you need to prove to me in the Bible where it is that Jesus talks about your modern temple ceremonies, the, the endowment and so forth. Um, and so this, this not only presupposes uh, Sola Scriptura, which in, in itself is a uh, a self-defeating doctrine. It, it is a cir it's circular reasoning when you get down to it. Um, at brass tacks, when it all comes down to it, Sola Scriptura is self-defeating um, for a number of reasons. Um, but suffice it to say, uh, that's what it boils down to. And it, the type of question that you're receiving when someone asks you to show them directly and explicitly, where in the Bible uh, does it teach X, X, Y, Z about your, your theology? Um, whether it's the temple, whether it's uh, um, you know a modern uh, restored priesthood, uh, what have you, any number of different um, things that are uh, that we believe, and they're asking you, you show me in the Bible where it says X. Um, they're they're committing a logical fallacy. Um, this is this is a fallacy of trying to prove a negative. Um, there's a lot of things that Jesus didn't talk about or are not recorded of him speaking on in the New Testament. That doesn't mean that they're not true. That doesn't mean they don't exist. Uh, that they're not real. Um, and the, the fallacy is trying to prove a negative. You're trying to get me to prove where in the Bible it says something that it doesn't say. That, that doesn't track. That is a logical fallacy. So the second I try to introduce maybe extra biblical sources, things like apocryphal or pseudepigraphic texts, um, things like uh, early patristic uh, writings from, from the early church fathers um, that would seem to support a Latter-day Saint position on any number of topics or doctrines. But the second I do that, I'm now going outside of the Bible uh, to find sources, and my arguments are null and void. You have to show it, prove it uh, from the Bible directly. Anything else will not suffice. Um, and you can see why this turns into a circular argument uh, down the line. Um, the, the Bible is the sole infallible rule of faith. Why? Because the Bible says so. Um, now I know that's kind of a, a for, for those of you who might come across this video and who are sola scriptura believing Protestants, I know that's kind of a, a, a more watered down and you might, you might even say a mischaracterization of sola scriptura. But generally speaking, when it gets down to it, that's the type of argument that this devolves into. Um, and it just becomes a circular argument. And so it's better for Latter-day Saints, in my opinion, 
to not play into that game. We don't have to. We have modern revelation and modern prophets. So anyways, I know I, I'm, I'm starting to ramble a little bit and I don't want this to be a super long video, but I just wanted to get this out there as kind of an addendum to some of the comments and, and things that I've received, questions that I've received on a number of videos saying something to the effect of Latter-day Saints um, are teaching a false gospel because X, Y, Z, and a lot of the conversation revolves around our temple worship um, and what we believe regarding the uh, eternal destiny of mankind. And so um, because of that, I wanted to make this short video and remind myself and anybody who's listening, Latter-day Saint or otherwise, that we do not believe in Sola Scriptura. We believe in, in an open canon and in modern revelation, that God can reveal things about himself and about his gospel to us now, anew, afresh. Um, if World War III broke out and every Bible on earth were burned in the fire and we had no, no more copies of the Old or New Testament, um, God could reveal these things again. He would simply reveal them through his chosen servants, prophets and apostles. Um, to me, it, 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 it goes back to even Jeremiah. Remember when Jeremiah wrote um, a prophecy that was given to him by God and it was burned in a fire. And so the Lord revealed again those same things. He wrote them all down again, and including some more. He expounded on some things and provided even more uh, written uh, revelation. If, if it came to that, God would simply just reveal his word, his gospel, to prophets and apostles, his chosen servants on earth today, anew. And Latter-day Saints would have absolutely no qualms with that. That would be wonderful. And in fact, that's what the Book of Mormon is. That's what the Doctrine and Covenants is. That's what the Pearl of Great Price is. These are modern revelations and modern scripture revealed to us anew in these last days, uh, in this dispensation to teach us about the nature of God and his gospel, the gospel of his, son, of his son, Jesus Christ, and the nature of his atonement, that we might have full access to the throne of God through the atoning blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Um, and we have a fuller understanding of his gospel and his nature because of modern revelation. So Latter-day Saints, um, don't fall into the trap of thinking that you have to prove everything from the Bible. Um, and non-Latter-day Saints, don't think that just because you believe in Sola Scriptura that everyone else has to operate under that same uh, that same worldview, that same belief system. In fact, there are many Christians who don't operate under Sola Scriptura, um, who aren't just not just Latter-day Saints, but Catholics and others. Now, we would disagree with them on a number of other issues. But remember, Sola Scriptura um, is predominantly a Protestant doctrine. Not everybody's going to feel the need to work within your parameters. Um, what you would accept. So when you ask a Latter-day Saint to prove something from the Bible, just know we don't have to. In any case, this has gone on long enough, and I'll see you guys in the next video.